intensification is a big priority now. Yep. What was the big issue in Ajax? What, what, what were people clamoring about? Why is public art important? There are many, many talented artists in our area. What are some of the things that Joanne's most proud of? Working with community is what I've enjoyed the most. What made you, what made you decide to get into politics? Hello, everybody, and indeed, welcome to TOA Talks Season 2. Uh, my name is Sterling Lee, Regional Counselor for Ward 2, and your host for the season. With me today, I have the esteemed, <laughs> the the legendary, Joanne Dyes, Regional Counselor for Ward 3. Joanne, how are you doing? That's a really high bar you set there. <laughs> you, uh, you've been a counselor for how long? How many years has it been? 21 years. 21 years. Yeah, yeah I've been very lucky. Yeah. So, I mean, I, what we're all dying to know is, um, <laughs> how did you how did you get into politics? So 21 years ago, you were probably 19 years old, and at 19, what what made you decide nice to get? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what made you What made you decide to get into politics? What was your journey? I I think for a lot of women, they're involved in their community, and I became involved through the arts, um, playing a, a local band, and started a band out here in Durham Region, and uh, a concert. Now, band. by band, do you mean like a rock band or what no, kind of band? No, it's a concert band. Very so it's good. Like orchestra with no strings. And you play the French horn. Perfect. So I got involved in the arts through that, through Pine Ridge Arts Council and promoting the arts. And then, of course, when your children start school, you get involved with the school councils. And there was uh, mid-90s, there was a lot of issues about um, major changes in the schools and in, in right. our health care system. And that's what I, really what pol politicized me at the time. Didn't know it. And then when I moved here to Ajax, which was like 25 years ago, um, yeah, people started saying, oh, you should run for office. Where did you move uh, from? Pickering. Oh, okay. Yeah. We won't hold that against you. No, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's great. Um, and then, so you started as a school board trustee or as a local counselor first? Uh, no, I started at the local level. I realized, you know, when the province took over the uh, budgets for school boards that you really had no power. Right. Um, so I decided to run locally. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember uh, what you won by? I didn't. I lost. The oh, okay. Time, I lost. We'll edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the first. Uh, and I said, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> right. So that's probably so what, 2000, you probably ran the first time yes. then, right? Yes. And then 2003, we got up back on the horse and we tried again. We did. And yes. uh, you won that one. I did. And how much, do you remember how much you won no, by? No, I don't, but it was, it was not bad. It was pretty good. What did you do differently to, to, to earn the trust of your ward? I, I don't know so much as what you've learned differently. Back in the day, there was um, one man running and three women, and we were told up front that women don't really get in when there's, you know, there's a male contender. Oh, wow. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so it was interesting because I'd never been through the process before, and, and um, I was proud that I, I did it, and I'm done, and I wasn't doing that again. But I think, you know, there's still issues that once you're politicized or once you see, I recognized, I guess, every, every organization, whether it's school, church, whatever, is political. Right. And so it's just what you, you're continuing what you're doing working in the community, which I really enjoyed. So I decided to give it another shot. That's awesome. And yeah. here we are. And here we are. Uh, 21 years later. Yes. Yes. My goodness. And I don't know where that went. That went very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blink, blink and you miss it. It does. Um, so if there's one thing I know about Joanne, it's A, you do play the French horn. And then B, you have a love of parks and green spaces, the environment. Um, you know, I, I wish everyone would have this love, but where did your passion for the environment come from? I mean, as, as evidence, you did, not, you did not drive here today. No, I rode my bike here today. <laughs> and she's going to teach me afterwards because I can't ride a bike. But um, So where did, where did this love of green spaces and the environment come from? I, were, I grew up in a rural area. Maybe that's it. Okay. And always enjoy. I always had space. We had a, a lot of space. Went to a school where you, you know, in, this, in the wintertime you had two ice rinks. Um, and we were always very involved outdoors and did a lot of sports outdoors. So I think that's part of it. And just the recognition that... It's not a frill by any means. Right. Um, it's very necessary for people's enjoyment. You know, you're, when you stay in a community, it's not just about the home that you live in. It's about what's outside that front door. And green space is very important. You mentioned playing sports. Uh, Joanne, what do you play? Are you a basketball player? 
No, I was Lacrosse? a volleyball player. You're a volleyball player. Badminton, volleyball. <laughs> Do you still play badminton? No, I haven't for a while. Let's play badminton, when you we and go, I. If I go up north and there, we go camping, I'll take the badminton rackets up. Or, you know, uh, we should start a pickleball duo. Because the mechanics not, are about the same. I'm not ready for pickleball yet. What, 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 are, we <laughs> what, what are we waiting for? It is the most in sport right now. You can't get in. <laughs> you have, yeah, fair enough. We, we're, we're working on that, There's aren't we? There's a lineup. Right. Um, so... What do you feel uh, the Ajax community, Ward 3 uh, as a whole, the region, what can we do to help uh, keep Ajax clean and green? That's clean That's been a green. big well, priority for you, right? I, it's a very individual responsibility, in my opinion. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it, it bothers me when I put my recycling bin out in the morning and people have filled it to the bin where you know if there's the least bit of wind, it's... It it's flies. Gone. It's gone. And it's everywhere. We have, it's, there's a lot of wind here in Ajax. It's a lot of windy days. So it's just. No doubt because of the politicians. <laughs> no, from okay. the lake. <laughs> from the lake. There it is. Better answer. Yes. <laughs> We're part of the community too. You know? Right. <laughs> I just think it's people sort of recognizing that they have to do their part and really think about what they're doing. When you go for a walk in the park, don't drop your water bottle. Right. If you were going for a hike and you had a bat, you know, you're backpacking, you don't drop garbage you put it in your backpack so just take a bag with you right take it home and you know the mailboxes you know that are shared in most communities make sure there's nothing you know blowing around pick it up do you remember one of the first motions you and i worked on together back in 2019 no it's haven't. related I'm cr it was the climate emergency you and i oh, yeah, were yeah, responsible yes, for yes. Uh, ajax declaring a climate yeah. emergency yeah. which was huge right it is huge and it, I was just at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities this week, and that's a big topic because, you know, they're burning up out west. The fires have already started. And out and east as well, like all out over east, pretty much. And here we'll have it in, you know, north, north Durham. I mean, it's, uh, it's tragic, and we've been talking about it for how many years? Right. How many years? And it's here. Our weather has changed, and we know that. We didn't get much snow this winter, did we? No, well, just, no, we didn't. It's yeah. different. It's very, very different. You were uh, part of like part of the council 21 years ago. Uh, absolutely, you must have seen like the change in the priority of making the climate and the oh, yeah. nature a priority, right? Like yeah. 21 years ago, I'm sure it wasn't. It was brought up. Was it really on the radar of council at the time? Not so much then. I mean, yes, it has been on our radar through time, and I think people were a little bit tired of hearing about it, so they kind of turned it tuned it out a little bit. Um, but it's back full force. Because our, we really have failed to do anything. Right. And it's funny because, like, you know, um, intensification is a big priority now. Yep. I'm trying to think back. Like, 21 years ago, what was the big uh, issue in Ajax? What, what, what were people clamoring about? What was what was on people's minds 21 And I'm putting you on the spot here, but can you think back 21 years? and? Well, when I started, well, when I came on, we started trying to get art going, public art. And, okay. yeah. and public parks and how you make those places a destination kind of thing. Tourism was always an issue too. Um, getting businesses was always an issue. The, the issues are pretty much the same. Right, just on a bit they're of a larger just, scale. They're just different, yeah. Right. So why aren't you bringing in more businesses? Well, we do our best to help people locate here, but we are not in charge of the businesses. We, don't, we can't do that. Right, right. Um, so we do what we can. And the same with tourism, and we really, you know, we've grown in, in a sense with tourism because the municipality has grown and has more to offer, as do the, our neighbors. And we're close to a city, which helps too. So, so you bring up public art, which is a great, you know, I see some fixtures just right here. Why is public yeah. art important? Because I think a lot of people don't understand that, right? Like they don't understand the trickle down that comes from public art. So why in your, in your, because you've always fought for this as well, and you know, being an artist yourself, why do you find uh, the arts so important for a municipality? Well, it's the element of surprise when you go to a place. Right. And so we were supposed to go to Chicago last year for a conference, and I couldn't make it. But there's the bean, the, the giant bean. Bean, that everybody, bean that everybody knows about. So that's what you call an interactive art piece where people can see themselves, they can go underneath it. It's just fun. It's giant. And so it really, it attracts people. And we just, in Ajax, got the new big Ajax letter sign. That's right. In Pat Bailey Square, which lights up. And it goes to music. It's, it's wonderful. And I see, I have seen several large groups of people who are specifically going there to have their photographs taken. Right. 
so it's fun it's interactive it's the element of surprise and it's they're you know art is subjective of course but you know you appreciate it think oh isn't that nice so in calgary where i was for fcm there was art everywhere it was it was really interesting might not be your cup of tea but you still can we agree though enjoy it. that calgary has some of the oddest architecture did you notice that no i thought they did quite well i thought they I, really I, there thought was no about symmetry it. i felt there was no connection cohesion it when looked like just random you went in toronto true uh, fair point <laughs> you know it's all variations they, of the same glass building right in toronto yeah, right but now they, i thought calgary did a really good job of thinking about what they were that those high rises what they were going to look like okay. i was very impressed and their library is gorgeous too from the outside and right. you see all of it um and they're building a new art center and they have a music hall and they have art it's a very cultural city so it becomes a destination point and it's so funny i would never consider calgary a cultural city no but you wouldn't you were you know but it becomes a destination and then that's when all the other things kick in because then you have to feed them and you have to have a place for them to stay overnight. And, and businesses stop. want to settle there. Shops and, and yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, speak uh, still on art. You're part of the Pine Ridge Council and you're, you're like a jury, you, you're, you're, you know, judge and jury on a lot of exhibitions, correct? Um, I helped. It was used to be the Pickering Arts Council and we sort of, it needed... Um, some changes and up, you know, just sort of sure. bring it back into the, you know, different times. And so it morphed into Pine Ridge Arts Council. So was there was a part... piece of art that ever just spoke to you that you still remember to this day? Because you've been connected with them forever, right? One piece of art, you're just like, oh my God, that was your Sistine Chapel, your Michelangelo's David. You mean from the Pine Ridge? From the Pine Ridge. Ar- you remember Council? what it was like? Yeah. Do you remember anything well, like that? I was, I was admired. Well, I knew the artists. I, I admired Dorsey James, who did wood carvings. He's done one um, as you go into Greenwood um, at the entranceway. He did some, but he has some in Pickering as well. And he's just amazing. And he works with students in the school where they'll bring in a, what he calls the, the BAs, the badass kids, or the children that just don't know what to do and they don't really want to study much. So they bring in a big piece the big tree and together they carve it and he teaches them how to carve. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Something I do not know how to do. Man. Right. Yeah. But there are many, many extremely talented artists in our area and you don't need to go, you know, to home sense to buy art for your walls. You can go, um, you know, there's the Ajax art group and they have two shows a year and you can go and get an original for probably what you pay. Right. Yeah elsewhere so there's many many um very talented artists so we talked about the jury at art uh program um what do you do with your free time are you an artist i mean beyond music do you do you like to draw sculpt what does joanne dyes do i don't have time for that anymore i haven't done it for a long time right you did before i used to yeah so maybe i should be buying your art i should be paying (laughs) you for a picture I, I spend most of my time, I still do my music That's that keeps me. Do you compose yourself or you just kind of no, play no. like classics? I just play. I don't play enough. I, again, time. Right. <laughs> but I do still play in the band. And so I go every Tuesday night for a rehearsal. What's your favorite piece to play? My favorite piece? Yeah. Do you love like Tchaikovsky, uh, well, Mozart? Be, it, it would be music. Those are the only two composers I know. parts, of course. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> What are movie themes? You must do movie themes with your band from time to time. The Grinch has a great home part and okay. uh, played that. Yeah, I played all kinds of things. I think you played the Mag- Magnificent Seven theme? Yes. That's a great theme. Yes. Great yeah. theme. Yeah. So uh, you play music. What else does Joanne dies? And I, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I always call Joanne by her first and last name. This has happened for six years and I can't stop. You have such a <laughs> wonderful sound, sounding name. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what does Joanne dies do? Uh, like, you're, you know, you go home. You don't slow turn on watching movies like I do, I find. What do you do in your free time? I find that, that being a counselor keeps you pretty busy. It's absolutely true. Keeps busy. But I do like to garden in the summer, so I'm out there all the time. Of course you have a green trying thumb. Trying to get it just right. So that, so I'm growing my veggies, you know? <laughs> Are you, a, you seem like a camper as well. Are you a camper? I do like to camp. I do. Is it real camping, like with no. a tent and fire? Or is no. it like glamping? I have a pop-up tent trailer, so it's off the ground. Oh, okay. Small one. Yeah. How, how, how many people is asleep? Five. Oh, pretty, pretty good, then. Yeah. And you bring your, your kids, I'm guessing, and your... Well, my, you know, in July, my, my son and uh, his wife, grandkids, were going for uh, a week. Yeah, and how many grandkids do you have now? You have two. The two? Two. What are their ages? 
They are five and eight. Do, uh, I, so I have a six-year-old. Is there any advice you can give to me or to your kids to raise our this next generation? <laughs> Well, I, I would tell you that they're their own personality from the get-go. You're not going to change them. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I can absolutely do it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you just teach them right and wrong, and you hope for the best. Right. Um, so 21 years, we've been on council. Yes. Uh, and you, sorry, excuse me, we, uh, the royal we. You've been on council for 21 yep. years. What are some of your highlights? If you were to look back and say, this is the things I'm most proud of. These are the motions I passed. These are the... Um, causes I, I stuck my flag to. What are some of the things that Joanne's most proud of? Uh, working with community is what I've enjoyed the most. Um, bringing in the first art policy and getting that, you know, and a, a, a staff person, Bobby G, who's wonderful. And, you know, um, we have a process for public art. Now we have public art. Right. And that's great. Um, the fact that we have a leash free park, little small things, leash free park and the first um, community garden. And these are all things that bring community together. People meet in places like that. And I think that's really, really important. Right. Um, that's why people want to stay here and want to live here. So those types of things really interest me. I like, you have to like people for this job. And um, Oh, that's what I did wrong. That's, there that's, you go. That's, and yeah. the other thing was, you know, working hard on the water quality issue. Right. That was a six-year battle about trying to get them to put a tertiary treatment in at the poop plant. And um, it's coming back. In your time, it'll come back. It's true. We've had more. <laughs> uh, I, I am confident in saying I've had it's more conversations back. with you about poop uh, than yeah. anything else. Who and it's... thought? That's what I'd learned the most about. Right. <laughs> so... I mean, my, my wife's not surprised in my case, but in your case, yeah. And um, yeah, you guys... But it was, an, well, it was interesting. Well, I've always had an interest in water. You know, the Great Lakes are, are an amazing are amazing. I'm going for a ride. Some say they're great. Well they are and they're incredible. I'm going up to Superior this summer. Oh, so nice. I'm hoping to see that. I've never seen Lake Superior before, so um, but you know, we tend to use them as our dumping grounds. So I was recently at a conference for the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative, which is a binational organization of mayors around towns and cities that share the Great Lakes with us. And it's always very interesting. We have a lot of the same issues, but it's always about nutrient loadings in the Great Lakes, right. pollution in the Great Lakes, um, and of course the you know the same issues of erosion along the shoreline. And now they're now they're starting to talk about a blue economy. Which okay. is really quite interesting because we so get water -based... freighters that are going through with goods through the Great Lakes, but tourism. We have some tourism also happening. You can go on a cruise in the Great Lakes. Uh, we need more infrastructure for that. Toronto used to have a shuttle that went from um, Toronto to Rochester. Well, that, that's you just right. drive your car Apparently right on. it's coming back. Is it coming back? Because I have uh, my sister lives in Rochester, and I remember I went on that once, and it was the greatest experience. It was. And, and this yeah. is what we were talking about: is we don't utilize the Great Lakes enough for right. transportation, and why couldn't you get, uh, you know, a hovercraft in Ajax to go into Toronto? Because it would take you no time at all, and. It'd be way, way quicker than the train. You add my interest at Great Lakes with the word hovercraft, you have my undivided attention because that sounds <laughs> phenomenal. Um, can yeah, you name know. the Great Lakes uh, from uh, east to west? Oh my God. Do, every kid it's had like a, a mnemonic device. Ontario, Do you remember that? Erie. No, uh, yeah. Huron. No, I can't remember. I'm missing one. Ontario. Yeah. Lake Erie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What am I missing? We can edit this out if you forget one. <laughs> no, I know. It's named after a state. That's right. That's a big hit. Michigan. Thank yeah. you. The fishing one. The big fishing lake. Didn't you have like a, my, my, I remember Your growing up, crew. old elephants have milky skin. Who? Old elephants have milky skin. How do you know that? It was how I was taught it. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I've never forgotten that. So I now know the I've order. Never Same as the planets. It's my very and educated mother it just served us nine it was pickles, but now Pluto's gone. I have never heard that one. You, oh, okay. So you, you learned it the old-fashioned way. generation. Totally was. Totally was. Um, so. Um, and I've, I've gone all the, I've been around most of those lakes. Not around, but right. to most of those lakes, yeah. And maybe one day the planet's Cycling. Cool. Have you really yeah. cycled? Well, we've done a lot of, well, we did. Remember we did, well, you wouldn't remember, we started. I don't ride a bike, so I, I probably do not, yeah. was not there. So I've done the Sudbury to the Sioux and, and up that way. And of course, here to Montreal. Is that the farthest um, you biked from here to Montreal? What's the farthest total distance? That trip was probably the the furthest because we got lost a lot. Right. <laughs> 
So you'd have to backtrack and go back. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a lot of construction. Do you ever want to do a race? <laughs> no. You don't want to like do the Tour no. de France or the equivalent of the Tour no. de France? Okay. That's a totally different thing. Yeah. You're not competitive. You don't have that competitive streak like I have. We're in politics, Sterling. No, so there you have. You have you have some natural <laughs> competitiveness, but you don't have the over competitiveness that I have. I find. How do you know? Because you know, or, or you'd be like, yeah, I'm totally gonna do the Tour de France, and I'm gonna win. That's that's over competitiveness. Well, music is competitive. You have How to so? compete for a seat, and it's, you start. I oh. started vocally, and you have to audition. You have to do all those things. Okay, I'm gonna time it right there. It's, you started vocally, so you're saying you sang. Yeah, I did. Well, what's your favorite song? If really you were to sing a for the uh, the town of Ajax right now, what would you I'm sing? Not singing I'm not saying you have to, but what song would you sing? I have no idea. You know, when you do music, you like there's different genres you like. There's no one thing that so I. So you don't have a favorite song of all time? Not really. Favorite artist of all time? Favorite artist. Of why are you getting really into it, aren't you? These are the real hard-hitting questions you yeah, can expect from Sterling. Yeah, these are really, Lee. really important questions, aren't they? You're a Beatles fan, I'm sure. Everyone, well, of course. Everyone's a Beatles fan. Of course. Did you like Beatles or the Elvis? I like Elvis. I like uh, more Beatles. Than, more than? I love Elton John. Okay. There we go. You grew up with a lot of bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth? Where did that come from? <laughs> I like them. Smash Mouth? Yeah. I like all different kinds of music. Right? I think the lead singer of Smash Mouth recently passed, actually. <laughs> yes. I think he was, he was sick, right. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, on that note. Well, um, I grew up with punk rock, okay? Yes. <laughs> well, Sex Pistols. <laughs> yes. The Ramones. Were you did, were you, were you a punk rocker back back in the day? Uh, I'd enjoy some, yeah. Do you have pictures? No. With like the... the, no, the do you have mohawk? I you don't have to dress like one to enjoy the music. It's not untrue. But did you wear like the jewelry and everything? Like the no. spikes? No. I bet you we can find a picture of you in the spikes. My mother would never allow that. Right, fair enough. <laughs> you can show me afterwards. You can draw a picture of it. Um, well, that is all the time we have. Uh, Joanne, thank you so much. This has been utterly delightful. Thank you. you... Oh, yeah, and I did bring you some flowers. Oh, you're, you're so kind. I know. This is absolutely going to trigger my asthma. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, before we go, uh, where can people reach you? Well, on my website. On your website, great. Yeah, they can reach me anywhere. If you really want to get a hold of me or you have an issue, then you can call the town. And my all my information is on the website at the town as well. Uh, we'll also see you uh, every every Remembrance Day of the Legion. You are yes. you are one of the most popular yes, people there. I'm a member of the Legion, yeah. As well as you also have a community newsletter and you do community yes. ward meetings with Lisa Bauer, correct? Yes. Perfect. And I'd promote them, but it won't be out in time. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, Joanne, it's been an absolute pleasure. Joanne dies. Uh, I love talking with you. We could talk about Thanks, Sterling. everything anytime you want. Um, so that's all we have. Um, tune in next time for the next episode of TOA Talks.